I'm glad the world didn't end Friday so that I can say thank you for an amazing year. Uh, I was trying to tell some folks about different service projects we've done and some of the things that go on in worship uh, a week or two ago, and I kept forgetting to mention this or that thing. Like, I'd be telling a story, I'm like, oh, I forgot to tell you about this thing that we did. Um, So thank you. Will you pray with me? Let's pray. Gracious God, we want to know what you're doing so we can be part of it. Bless us with your spirit as Christmas approaches so that we can live into the joy of meeting your son Jesus in unexpected places. Amen. Um, So for folks who know uh, me and Heather, you probably won't be surprised to learn that Anne was a planned baby. There was some preparation that went into, there was some preparation that went into getting ready for her. Um, For example, we took a class just to help us decide if we wanted to try for a baby. And then there were doctor's visits upon doctor's visits and various encounters with the wonders of modern medicine and three or four different medications. I'm trying not to get like too much information here, but um, it was a lot. It could have been a lot worse. There are people who go through a lot more than we did, but it was still quite a production to get pregnant. And what's crazy is that in the moment when the pregnancy test turned from a little uh, blank white oval to a little blue equal sign, my first reaction after, oh yeah, I thought so, was, what have we done? (laughs) What have we done? Because uh, this can't be undone, you know? There's no going back. What have we done? And that lasted for about 10 seconds, right? And then we started dancing around in excitement and joy. And then nine months later, and hooray, yay. So if two grown-up people with steady jobs and a house and a cat and social security numbers and Twitter accounts can have a moment of panic at the announcement of a momentous pregnancy, or just a pregnancy, what must it have been like for Mary? who was a single teenager, to get this news from an angel. And she doesn't even get to say, what have we done, since the whole idea is God's and not hers. More likely, as she's recovering her wits and trying to figure out what to do, she's thinking, what has God done? What is God doing? What is God thinking? Or maybe not. There's a legend that Mary was actually not the first person asked to be the mother of the Christ. Gabriel, in this story, went from woman to woman, starting with the daughters of the rulers and the priests, and then the daughters of the merchants and the artisans, and finally, at the smallest, humblest house in Israel, coming to Mary, who is the first one to say, Yes, let it be as you have said. It may be that she takes it all in stride. But at the same time, Mary does seem interested in some moral support. So our passage today from Luke starts when Mary figures out what to do in the short term after she's received this announcement, which is to go and see her relative Elizabeth, whom the angel had casually mentioned in a breach of patient confidentiality, is also in the middle of an unusual pregnancy. Although in her case, it's unusual because she's so old to be having her first baby. And oh, by the way, her husband had a vision in the temple that made him completely unable to speak right before she got pregnant. So given all this, Mary figures it might be a good idea to pay Elizabeth a visit. It's a chance to talk things over with someone who can sympathize and get some perspective on how she's going to manage to be a single mother in a society that has no good place, no good role, No happy ending for women who don't have a man to protect them. She might have been wondering on her way to Elizabeth how she would explain the visit she's had with the angel and how her child might end up a little eccentric. But Elizabeth doesn't need any explanations. As soon as Mary says hello, Elizabeth's baby, the future John the Baptist, gives a big jump and she interprets it as greeting and as blessing. Zechariah may have gone silent after his encounter with the Holy Spirit. But Elizabeth responds immediately with joy. Her question is not, what has God done? But, why is this happening to me? Now normally when you hear, why is this happening to me? It's not in a happy context. 
Usually, why is this happening to me is the kind of question that goes with tragedy, with loss, terrible sickness, in a word, suffering. But there's no reason that it has to be. Elizabeth's question turns that question on its head. She doesn't ask, why is this terrible thing happening to me? But why is this amazing, wonderful thing happening to me? Why am I carrying such a wonderful baby, one who can help me see and marry the fulfillment of God's promises to our people? Why am I privileged in this way? How did I get on the VIP list? It's possible that Elizabeth is on the VIP list for this very reason, because she doesn't expect it. But she responds with gratitude, with love, and with joy. And Mary responds with her own song of joy. My soul magnifies God. My spirit rejoices in my Savior. What has God done? What is this miracle? What has God done? What is this miracle about? God in love has created the world and us in it. God in love has reached out, redeemed, sought, provided for, and sustained us. God in love has called us to love one another. God in love has formed a people to live out that love. And because the gap between God and creation was still too wide, too far for us to reach across, God bridged it for us and became a human being. And not a powerful and wealthy and unreachable human being, but a poor and vulnerable baby. And that turns everything on its head, as Mary sings to us. That turns everything on its head. What is God doing? God is creating a world where the smallest, humblest of nurseries is among the most important places on earth. Why is this happening to us? Let's stand with Elizabeth in joy and amazement as we ask that question. Thanks be to God. Amen. So let's have some time for silence, and then we'll have some community conversation with no question, just open forum. What's that? Quaker style, that's right. Well, let's have some silence now for reflection.